This is insane. JJK is ending in only five chapters. A character we thought was dead returns, Yuji destroys Sukuna's soul, and so much more. Let's talk about it right now. You guys know how this works. If you enjoy my JJK content and you want to see more in the future, leave a quick like and comment for that YouTube algorithm. And if you want to be sure that you won't miss my reviews of the final JJK chapters, do me a huge favor and subscribe and click that notification bell right now. Before we get into the story, we have to talk about the massive news that the JJK manga will officially end in five chapters, or rather in four chapters after this one, so around September 29th, 2024. That means that we only have about a month of JJK left, and this is absolutely shocking news for the entire fandom. I mean, yeah, we all figured that the Sukuna fight would be the final fight of the story, and that the end was near, but I don't think anyone thought we were this close to the end. We literally just went through this same thing with MHA a few weeks ago. We were notified that it would be ending in 5 chapters, and then those 5 chapters made a lot of fans mad because they felt the story was rushed at the end and the ending wasn't satisfying. Now even though I thought the MHA ending did have some strong points and some aspects that were nicely foreshadowed and a lot of the stuff made sense in the context of the story, there were definitely parts that felt rushed and there were definitely some major unresolved plot points like the fate of every romantic relationship, the fate and identity of Deku's father, and so on. So is this what we're about to see in JJK? A rushed ending with a bunch of unresolved plot points that's going to make a lot of fans mad? I will talk more about this at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But now let's get into the story. The last chapter featured that insane twist where Megumi's soul appeared to awaken and activate the Ten Shadows technique in order to attack Sukuna. First we saw Megumi and Yuji having a brief conversation, and this was kind of like their souls talking to each other. Megumi seemed to have given up on life because everything that he ever wanted was taken away from him. His whole reason for living and for fighting was to protect his sister and to ensure that the two of them had just a simple, ordinary life. But after the tragic end of his sister and after everything else that happened, Megumi just kind of gave up. At first, Yuji didn't understand why Megumi would feel like giving up, but after thinking about his grandpa's struggle with illness, Yuji decided that he understood. He knew that Megumi was suffering, and he knew that he had no right to tell him that he had to go on living. But of course, as we know, regardless of what Megumi decides, Yuji is not going to stop fighting. And he still has to finish his deadly battle against the King of Curses, Sukuna, no matter what the outcome is in the end. The chapter then took us back to that fight, where Sukuna started using the Hollow Wicker Basket technique to counter the effects of Yuji's domain. Sukuna managed to regain the initiative, and he started getting the best of Yuji, driven primarily by his rage at the fact that Yuji would dare to look down on him and pity him. But then, during a crucial moment in the fight, Sukuna suddenly started sinking into a pool of black liquid beneath his left leg. This means that Yuji's dismantle did manage to breathe life back into Megumi's soul, and now Megumi is fighting back against Sukuna. Yuji used the brief distraction that Megumi provided to smash Sukuna right in the face, and then to continue attacking him, thereby regaining the initiative in the fight. Yuji managed to do some serious damage to Sukuna, and he even managed to crack Sukuna's hollow wicker basket. In the end, Sukuna realized that he had to make an extremely risky move. He had to use Gojo's strategy to replenish his cursed technique. He had to basically destroy a part of his own brain and then repair it using RCT, which, if it works and doesn't kill him, will allow Sukuna to replenish his curse technique. It seemed that Sukuna succeeded, he seemed to be good again, and he began to expand his domain. But then, at the very end of the chapter, we got yet another twist. First, we realized that Yuji is missing two of the fingers on his left hand. Then, on the very last page of the chapter, we saw that even though we thought that all of Sukuna's fingers were now accounted for, we were wrong. There is still one more finger left, and this finger could decide who will win this epic fight once and for all. The new chapter starts off with a flashback discussion between Yuta and Gojo, and obviously this is a discussion taking place before the battle against Sukuna. But the interesting thing about this conversation is that Gojo and Yuta have actually switched bodies at this point, 
So Gojo is talking to Yuta from Yuta's body, and Yuta is talking to Gojo from Gojo's body, at least for the first part of the chapter. This doesn't actually go on for the whole chapter, so that's a bit confusing, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. Gojo and Yuta's body asks Yuta if he wants the final Sukuna finger. Yuta and Gojo's body says, yeah, you're hiding it, aren't you, Gojo-sensei? Yuta wants to give the finger to Rika so that she can copy Sukuna's curse technique shrine, which would give Yuta the ability to use Sukuna's technique against him in battle. Gojo wonders though whether only one of Sukuna's 20 fingers would be enough for Rika to analyze the information of the shrine curse technique. Yuta agrees that this is a good point because for example, when he copied Inumaki's curse speech technique, Yuta still didn't know all the ways that it could be used and he had to actually ask Inumaki for the details. Gojo believes that keeping the final finger in their possession is actually a wiser decision since that way they don't have to lose their connection to Sukuna. Yuta explains that the condition for copying curse techniques is for Rika to eat a part of the target's body. Even though eating Sukuna's finger does technically meet that condition, there is also a caveat. The amount of the target that is consumed or the part of the target's body that is consumed depends on the target itself and on the number of times that Yuta intends to use the technique. In order to copy a more powerful curse technique, Rika would have to consume a significant part of the sorcerer's body. So for example, in order for Yuta to copy Limitless, Rika would have to consume Gojo's entire arm. And there's another catch. As soon as Gojo uses RCT to regrow his lost arm, the arm that Rika consumed suddenly becomes useless, and Yuta loses the ability to copy the technique. Inumaki and Hana could not heal their arms through RCT or modern science, and for that reason, Rika was able to consume their arms and Yuta was able to continue using their techniques. But if those body parts had been regenerated with RCT, then Yuta would lose the power to use the techniques. And there is another factor to consider. Even if a crucial part of the target's body cannot be consumed, the condition for copying a technique can be met through a binding vow that limits the amount of times that Yuta can use the technique in question. So for example, if Yuta makes a binding vow that he will only copy a certain technique one time and then never use it again, the amount of the target's body that Rika has to consume is significantly smaller than the amount she would have to consume in order for Yuta to keep using a technique many times. When Meimei asks Yuta whether he knows about the resonance between Yuji and Sukuna, Yuta answers that yes, he knows, and that is why this plan must be executed in the final moments of the fight between Sukuna and the others. And it is also why Yuji can only know the bare minimum of this plan. The sorcerers don't want Sukuna to catch wind of what they are up to because of his close connection to Yuji, which developed during the time that Sukuna's soul was stuck inside of Yuji's body. Even though Sukuna shouldn't be able to learn about Yuji's plan just because of his connection to Yuji, the sorcerers still have to be as careful as possible, just in case. Yuta says to Yuji that Sukuna's curse technique is already engraved on his body, even though he can't use it yet. Again, this is before the Sukuna fight and before Yuji had the ability to use Shrine, but the sorcerers already knew that he had the potential to unlock it because Gojo confirmed it with the Six Eyes. Back in the present time, Sukuna realizes that two of Yuji's fingers are missing and he notices that the wounds are not fresh. He didn't lose either finger recently, he lost them a while ago. Now, Sukuna recognizes that one finger should in fact be missing because he tore it off in order to transfer himself to Megumi but a second finger shouldn't. And at this point, Sukuna realizes what we've been predicting since the last chapter. Yuta successfully bluffed Sukuna. That's because Yuji also had Shrine engraved on his body. So Rika was able to consume Yuji's finger and copy the technique without ever having to consume a part of Sukuna himself. We then see that Utahime and Gakun Ganji are watching over Sukuna's final finger. Because Sukuna's finger is a special grade cursed object, it resists any physical attack or use of jujutsu. But even though the object cannot be attacked directly, there is a technique that could allow the sorcerers to use this final finger to attack Sukuna. Utahime says that through a binding vow that removes destroying the cursed object itself as an objective, and that focuses exclusively on the effect of a specific technique, it is possible for one person to pull it off. But Utahime is worried because it's only been a very short time since she's woken up. And that one person, the one person who just woke up, is none other than Nobara. Nobara is alive. She is now awake. She has an eye patch on her left eye. And she is ready to go as she says, smile boys, with a crazy grin on her face. 
Instead of trying to destroy the Cursed Finger, she ties it to one of her dolls and uses resonance to attack Sukuna's soul through the finger itself. On the very next page, we see Sukuna getting absolutely wrecked by the effects of resonance, and this will surely make his soul even more vulnerable to Yuji's attacks. He is unable to expand his domain, which is what he was about to do at the end of the last chapter, and we see genuine fear and worry on Sukuna's face as he realizes that he will now be defenseless against Yuji's sure hit effect. We see Nobara and Yuji both grinning madly, and in the very next moment, Yuji smashes Sukuna with his soul dismantle. Yuji punches and kicks the crap out of Sukuna, and it looks like it might be all over. But, yet again, Sukuna refuses to give up. He manages to land a punch to Yuji's gut, and Yuji is forced to back off. Sukuna asks Yuji if he really thought that he could take him out with his makeshift domain. Sukuna believes that Yuji has already surpassed his limits, and that he is quickly running out of cursed energy. It's been a while since Yuji has used RCT to heal his wounds, and the domain is sapping a huge amount of his cursed energy. So, Sukuna believes that Yuji is actually at the end of his rope, with the words, this ends for you here, you damn brat. Sukuna moves in for what he believes will be his final attack on Yuji. But, just as Sukuna thinks he has Yuji beat, he is suddenly struck with Yuji's special divergent fist attack. Yuji gives Sukuna a sharp stare and says, let's put an end to this cycle of curses, which is a play on the name of the series, Jujutsu Kaisen, which can mean Jujutsu battle cycle. On the final page of the chapter, we see Yuji striking Sukuna with a massive black flash in the form of a punch right to Sukuna's chest. In that moment, Sukuna's face looks completely contorted. He looks like Yuji just punched the life right out of him. We have never seen Sukuna look this injured before. This is a big freaking deal. The chapter ends with the words, the end of a long battle implying that this marathon struggle against Sukuna is finally coming to an end, and for real this time. Nobara returned to play her role in the battle, Yuji went plus ultra, and Sukuna is seemingly falling apart at the seams. Is this really it? Is this the end of the King of Curses? Well, spoiler alert, but yeah, pretty much it has to be, because as I said at the beginning of the video, Right before this latest chapter dropped, we received news that the JJK manga would be literally ending in 5 chapters. Gege has only 5 chapters to end the whole story, or I guess only 4 chapters after this one. So yeah, this fight has to come to an end very soon, and after all this time, this really could be it. It kind of has to be, right? What do you guys think about the insane events of this chapter, and about the shocking news that the JJK manga will be ending so soon? I have to say, personally, I am a bit concerned that the ending is going to be rushed, and that it's going to leave a lot of unresolved questions for us. Kind of like what happened with MHA. What is going to happen now with the Tengen merger? Are we never going to get a proper backstory for Sukuna? Are we ever going to find out what exactly happened to Yuji's father and how Yuji ended up in the care of his grandpa? There are still a lot of questions that haven't been answered, and I am genuinely concerned that we could be getting a rushed and unsatisfying ending. Hopefully not, but you know, I'm kinda worried. What do you guys think will happen now? Will Megumi reawaken and will the trio of Yuji, Megumi, and Nobara be reunited again after all this time? Will Sukuna just be defeated now, or will he keep fighting and maybe activate the Tengen merger with humanity as a last desperate attempt to win the fight in the end? Don't forget to share your feedback down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and you want me to keep him coming, don't forget to leave a like to let me know. And if you want to be sure that you won't miss my reviews of all the final chapters of JJK, be sure to subscribe right now and hit that notification bell to turn on all notifications. Thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see ya, Space Cowboy!